It's Elliot and Todd. While you're waiting for our next full episode, we wanted to share some bar snacks with you. What are bar snacks, you ask? We're sitting at the bar with a few friends to discuss some light, snackable design and pop culture topics for you, the listener. So join us and a few of our friends as we share our snacks with you. If you enjoy listening to podcasts like this one, you also enjoy research. But who has time to waste getting a library card? Now you don't have to. Using the latest in overseas holographic and laminating technologies, VIX IDs provides library cards for any spot you want to get into anywhere in the world. We've already done the research for you. Library of Congress? No sweat. New York Public Library of Ghostbusters fame? You betcha. We've gotten people into the esteemed libraries of Harvard, Yale, and Faber College. With over 3,000 institutions in our database, feel free to check out as many books as you like from as many places as you like to be kept as long as you like. The world's knowledge can be literally at your fingertips or under your bed or in your car or at a friend's house or even for sale online. When you do your research, do it with VIX. Hey friends, it's Todd. Thanks for listening to part two of our conversation with our friend Kyle Webster. If you haven't heard part one yet, go back and listen to that too. And there will be an upcoming part three as well for bar snacks. So let's jump back into the conversation. (laughs) Cast your mind back. You've already talked about your childhood um, a little bit. What is the first movie you remember seeing in the theater? Superman 2. Um, oh, with um, okay. wow, yeah, Christopher Reeves. Um, because I remember when their faces. So it, it end. It, it begins in the scene that the, the first movie begins with, where they cast um, Zod and the others out into space, and their faces are enormous on the screen. And we were in a movie theater, and there are huge faces with that ghostly lighting. Scared mm-hmm. the crap out of me. Um, and I just remember being petrified, but my parents, I wanted to leave the theater. I was like maybe six or I don't even know how old I was. And yeah. my parents were like, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And, and then I'm so glad I stuck it out. Cause then Superman shows up and everything's amazing. But that first little bit with Marlon Brando's voice and all that, it just, mm-hmm. it scared me. Um, so that was the first one. And I remember the second one I saw was a while after that. It was uh, return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the scene in, in Endor with the bikes whipping around and everything. Yeah, yeah awesome. I made kid. that whole movie yeah. just, I'm so, that's so, yeah. It was, what, 1983, I think that came out, right? Yep, yep. Yep. That's great. So there's a gap there, but anyway. No, I think those are two great movies. I don't know when Superman 2 came out. But... I have a question for both of you guys, because, Elliot, I think you you mentioned, like, Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi as an early movie. Empire Strikes Back, yeah. Okay, so what did you guys do? Did you go back and then watch Star Wars and uh, Empire Strikes Back and all that stuff then in order? Or, like, how did you do that? If you think about the 70s, the toys, right? You you knew about everything Mm -hmm. because of all the Kenner toys and all the ads. And I don't remember seeing... Star, I mean, I have seen Star Wars in the theater. Obviously, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I was too young when it first came out. Or maybe I did, and I just don't remember. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't remember my parents being, like, sci-fi people or anything. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I mm-hmm. saw Empire Strikes Back with them. I, I think it's hard for, like, younger people listening. And I think you guys will back me up on this. I think it's hard to understand the impact of Star Wars and how that captured the imagination of oh, everybody just amazing. in the late 70s and the 80s. I mean, it's yeah, a juggernaut. Yeah. So I had it, I didn't have uh, the toys, but what I had were coloring books. I was, mm-hmm. I remember oh, yeah. sitting on the floor um, and just coloring from those books and then drawing and copying what was in the books. And I hadn't even seen a movie. I just had the coloring mm-hmm. books and um, mm-hmm. they were so, the, even the drawings in the coloring books, which are not great, They tell the story of the movie. So I knew the story of Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back before I saw Return of the Jedi in the theater. That makes sense. Um, When we were older, though, by that point, anyway, I think we're like, what, eight or some nine and that came up. But anyway, um, we watched that and then we already had seen by that point at least Star Wars 
on, you know, VHS because um, mm-hmm. we started mm-hmm. knowing kids who had VHS players by like 81, 1981 or thereabouts. It's funny you say that. We were one of those families that the cable company made the glitch and we had free HBO for something like 10 years. Oh, wow. And so I'm sure I probably saw so much stuff on HBO. And of course, you know, wow. it's unedited and all that crap. So like, yeah, late night on HBO, man, it's game on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're a little absolutely. Kid, you learned a lot. Goes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. That, yeah. that was sort of my education. You remember that show Dream On? That was on HBO yeah. years and years ago, and the kid basically remembered everything, or the adult <laughs> remembered everything, clips from his youth. That's basically, I think, my story in some twisted way. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kyle's like that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was I was prime age when Star Wars came out. I think I was like. 13, 14, something oh, like wow. that. And, and, and you could only see it in the movie theater, right? Yeah, there was no sure. such thing yeah. as HBO or, or video or any, that, that was voodoo people. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I, like we, we saw it like five times yeah. that summer and I had friends that saw it 30 times Holy only cow. in the theater. You know, you're talking at the time it was probably three, four bucks a ticket. You yeah. paid that much to see it over and over in a theater. That's just, as you said, Elliot, that just, uh, is reaffirming that, it was a giant cultural juggernaut. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it wrangled everybody. And uh, yeah, to Kyle's point, you didn't have to see the movie to really follow along the story to pick it up in another movie or another movie because the products were so ubiquitous. Oh, yeah. No, it was amazing. I mean, there's no, never been anything quite like that that's taken over the whole yeah. world the way that did. Yeah. But. Yeah, I'm glad we were alive to experience that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. All right, so Kyle, who was, or maybe still is, your favorite advertising character? My favorite advertising character. Well, as a kid, the Michelin Man like made an impact just because he looked cool and fun and. I didn't even know what he did. I didn't know Michelin made tie care. It wasn't that didn't mean anything to me. It was just the I way he, he was just, drawn and he designed. Just, he just rate. He just goes around and rates restaurants, which is why he's rather poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he looks the way he looks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Has all the all the roles. <laughs> and then I'm sure, like like every kid, if anyone was in the, American anyway, um, the uh, what is it? The Kool Aid Man. Busting oh, through the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's just so yeah. burned in my brain. Even though we never had Kool-Aid in the house, it wasn't a drink that was in our house ever. It was mm. just there on the TV. And I was always like, that looks amazing. Um, so that was, yeah, Kool-Aid, man. Those two really just stick out. I can't think of any other ones. Yeah. Th- those are good ones. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, of course, um, the Rice Krispies guys, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't pick yeah. just one. No, That's sorry. Right. Yep, yep, yep. That's great. Those are all great choices. Okay. Going back to cartoons, we asked a little bit about cartoons. So, are you Camp Warner Brothers or are you Camp Hanna Barbera? Where do you fall in this great divide of ours? So that's a, that's such a hard question to answer because as an adult, I'm Camp Warner Brothers because of the quality of the animation and the drawing and the mm-hmm. designs, especially yeah. like the background designs. I mean, some of that stuff yep. is just gorgeous, mid-century modern like sensibility. Yep. I mean, there's so much going on there, um, and some like surrealism and like even Miro and I mean, there's so much influencing mm-hmm. those artists. That's just you can pull and go, wow, it's amazing. As a kid. Much I love uh, Looney Tunes, which of course is, is amazing, and the voice acting of um, well, I can't remember his name now. Shame on me. Mel Blank. Thank you, Mel Blank. Oh my God, what a genius! Um, all that stuff. But uh, man, I mean, I watched Scooby Doo, and I watched um, what is it, uh, Mr. Magoo? That's got to be Hanna Barbera, right? Flintstones, Jetsons. Oh, so like- Jetsons. I watched not much Flintstones actually, uh-huh. but lots of Jetsons. Um, and I think was I don't think Rocky Bullwinkle was Hanna Barbera. 
Um, but I watched yeah, that. Yeah, that, that I think was the same as Mr. Magoo. I can't remember that studio. Was that like Terry Tunes or like one of those kind of other? I don't know. I, don't know, I can't I don't remember. Know. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. Wikipedia that. We'll add that to the, our little bar snacks page. for. But you know, there was this one I watched, and I don't even know who his, what his name was, but he was like a pink alligator or something. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He With would a always say, straw boater hat. exit, yeah. stage left, or exit, oh, that, right. that was, Okay, that, that was Snagglepuss. Snagglepuss. That, that was Snagglepuss. guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What was he? He was... He he was like a panther. A um, panther, but he's pink, right? He was like uh, yeah, Paul. Yeah, 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 Paul. He was like the Paul Lind of panthers. He was like exit stage right. That okay. So like that just <laughs> stuck in my brain. I remember loving his yeah. voice and his whole thing. But um, yeah. yeah, he was he was Hanna Barbera. Yeah. So I think yep, younger yep. Hanna Barbera, and then now I'm to 100 percent Warner Brothers because it's just good stuff, good quality animation. You know what you guys yeah. just reminded me of that I haven't thought about in years. My brother and I when we were little. We had a Hanna Barbera plate, cereal bowl, and like mug, and they were all plastic. They were all you know that seventies plastic, but it had all all the characters ringing like cool. you know the plate, and it labeled all of them. It named all of them, so oh, you wow. could like so yeah you so it but it, again brilliant because when you watch the cartoons later, you'd be like, oh, that's so-and-so from, you know, my yep. snack plate or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm smart. sure that stuff is out there online still. We could, so maybe we'll find Did you that. only have one? Did you only have one of each? So both of you couldn't enjoy cereal at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, but, all right. Well, Carrie, you got to have toast. I'm having cereal. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what the logic was there. And also over time, because like the, the graphics were kind of like laminated on, the, you know, it's like a mellow yeah. plate or whatever yeah, like so yeah. you wash it after in the dishwasher and after a year it's like all blistering this is pre-microwaves right this is the 70s but like even just the heat from the dishwasher <laughs> you know from the drying cycle or whatever <laughs> and like you know the graphic then you're like a little kid and you're like why are there these bubbles and you're just totally bummed by that <laughs> i don't know also you get, zo- you get zombie yeah. versions of all the characters because parts of their faces are eaten away as the laminate That's goes awesome. away <laughs> Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I guess ha- I guess it just turned into a therapy session for me. I apologize. <laughs> and then Hanna Barbera did a series called "The Harlem Globetrotters Meet the Zombie I Hanna s- Barbera." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember the Globetrotters showing up in Scooby Doo episodes oh, and yeah. probably some others. It was so weird. Yeah, Curly Neal, Meadowlark, yeah. Lemon. Yeah, all the cameos. I think Hanna Barbera was was like just an artistic PR shop. You know, people would come by and they were like, "We got to get the Harlem Globetrotters more on the air. Who can help us? How about we tie them with Scooby Doo? Makes sense. Go with it." Yeah, Gary Reed. Yeah, just all kinds of random people. Yeah. 